Hi everyone. Today, I want to talk about some big changes happening in China's housing market. Recently, the Chinese government has introduced new policies to make buying a home a bit easier for people. They've lowered the down payments needed to buy a house. Now, first-time buyers only need to put down 15% of the home's price, and for those buying a second home, it's 25%. They've also cut mortgage interest rates to make monthly payments more affordable. These changes are meant to help boost the housing market because it's been slowing down quite a bit. The government hopes that by making it easier to buy homes, more people will jump into the market, which can help support the economy. In this video, I'll talk about how these policies affect everyday people in China. We'll look at how these changes can make homes more affordable and the risks that come with them. I want to also compare the situation to what we saw in the U.S. during the housing crisis. We'll explore if these new policies might create a similar risky situation for home buyers in China. So, let's get into it and see what's really going on with these new housing rules. All right, let's talk a bit about what's going on in China's real estate market and why these new housing policies were put in place. First off, China's real estate market has been hitting some rough patches lately. Imagine a car running out of gas; it's been slowing down significantly. Sales have dropped, and many developers are struggling with huge debts. For instance, major property developers like Evergrande have been in the headlines for all the wrong reasons, facing massive financial issues. This has created a lot of uncertainty and anxiety in the market. Now, let's break down the new policies. The Chinese government decided to lower the minimum down payments needed to buy a home. For first-time home buyers, it's now 15% of the home's price, and for those buying a second home, it's 25%. They've also cut mortgage interest rates, which means the monthly payments for home loans will be lower. So, why did they do this? Well, the main idea is to get the market moving again. By lowering the amount of money people need upfront and making loans cheaper, the government hopes more people will start buying homes. Think of it like adding fuel to that slowing car, hoping it'll speed up again. They want to stimulate demand, get people buying homes, which can help support the economy and bring some stability back to the market. These policies are part of a broader strategy to make the housing market healthier. With more affordable options, it's easier for people to enter the market, which can help balance out the supply and demand issues. Plus, by easing the financial burden on home buyers, it can help prevent a domino effect of financial troubles, where problems in real estate start spilling over into other parts of the economy. So, these new measures are essentially a big push to breathe life back into the housing market and, by extension, the broader economy. But as with any big change, there are potential risks and benefits, which we'll get into next. Let's talk about how these new housing policies in China impact everyday people, especially those looking to buy a home. First off, lower down payments are a game changer for first-time home buyers. Think about it like this: If you wanted to buy a $200,000 house under the old rules, you'd need $50,000 down. With the new policies, you only need $30,000. That's a big difference. This makes owning a home much more accessible for many people, especially young buyers or families who might not have a lot of savings. With these lower financial barriers, we're likely to see more people jumping into the market. It's like a sale at a store: when prices drop, more people buy. So, this policy could lead to a significant increase in home purchases. More buyers mean more activity in the housing market, which can help stabilize prices and spur economic growth. However, there's a flip side to this coin. With easier access to home loans, people might start borrowing more. Imagine if everyone started using their credit cards to the max because the bank lowered interest rates. It can lead to higher debt levels. The same thing could happen here with mortgages. If people take on too much debt, they might struggle to make payments if something goes wrong, like losing a job or if the economy slows down again. That's why it's crucial for home buyers to borrow responsibly. Just because you can get a bigger loan doesn't mean you should. It's essential to plan and make sure you can afford your monthly payments even if things get tough. Responsible borrowing practices can help avoid future financial strain and prevent a wave of defaults that could hurt the economy even more. Now, let's look at the benefits of these lower monthly mortgage payments for existing homeowners. For those already paying a mortgage, these policy changes mean they could save a lot of money each month. Lower interest rates can reduce monthly payments significantly, which means more disposable income for families. This extra cash can be spent on other things like education, healthcare, or even just day-to-day -day expenses, boosting overall consumer spending. However, we need to consider the long-term effects on financial stability. While these policies make homes more affordable now, if too many people borrow more than they can afford, it could lead to financial instability down the road. 
A sudden drop in property values or an economic downturn could leave many homeowners underwater, owing more on their mortgage than their home is worth. This scenario is a significant risk that needs careful management. In summary, while these new policies can help make homeownership more accessible and reduce monthly expenses for many, they also come with potential risks. It's a bit like walking a tightrope, there's a balance to be struck between making housing affordable and ensuring that people don't overextend themselves financially. Responsible borrowing and careful financial planning are key to making the most of these new opportunities without falling into debt traps. Alright, let's dive into some of the potential risks that come with these new housing policies in China. We've talked about how they can make homeownership more affordable, but there are some significant concerns we need to address. First, there are signs that China might be in a real estate bubble. Property prices in many cities are incredibly high, and we've seen a lot of construction activity, with new buildings popping up everywhere. This might sound good at first, but when you look closer, it's a bit worrying. Many of these new homes remain unsold, leading to a surplus. Imagine a store that keeps stocking new products without selling the old ones, eventually, it runs into problems. Developers in China have also accumulated massive amounts of debt. Companies like Evergrande and Country Garden are prime examples. They borrowed heavily to fund their projects, but now they're struggling to pay back those loans. This financial instability among major developers is a red flag. If these companies start to default, it could trigger a chain reaction throughout the economy. Now, let's talk about the impact on consumers. Encouraging more people to buy homes in a market that might be overvalued could lead to serious problems. If property prices are artificially high and they eventually drop, new homeowners could find themselves in a tough spot. They might end up owing more on their mortgage than their home is worth, which is known as being underwater. This situation can be financially devastating for families. Another risk is the potential for increased household debt. With these new policies, more people might take out large mortgages that they can barely afford. If the economy takes a downturn or if they lose their jobs, they could struggle to make their payments. This could lead to widespread defaults, putting even more strain on the economy. To understand the potential risks better, let's draw some parallels to the US housing crisis of 2007 to 2008. During that time, the US saw a similar situation with speculative buying and high debt levels. Low interest rates and relaxed lending standards made it easy for people to buy homes, even if they couldn't really afford them. When the market corrected, home prices plummeted, and many people defaulted on their mortgages. This led to a severe financial crisis that affected not just the US but the global economy. China's current policies, such as lowering down payments and reducing mortgage rates, are somewhat similar to the measures in the US back then. While these policies can boost the market in the short term, they can also encourage risky borrowing and speculative buying. If property values fall, it could lead to a similar crisis in China, with widespread financial instability and economic downturns. In summary, while the new housing policies in China can help make homes more affordable and stimulate the market, they also come with significant risks. The signs of a real estate bubble, high levels of debt among developers, and the potential for increased household debt are all major concerns. By looking at what happened in the US during the housing crisis, we can see the potential dangers of these policies if they are not carefully managed. It's crucial for both the government and consumers to proceed with caution to avoid a financial disaster. Let's bring in some expert insights and data to get a clearer picture of the potential risks tied to China's new housing policies. Many economists and real estate experts have voiced concerns about these changes. For instance, N.I. Hong, China's housing minister, mentioned that while lowering down payments and reducing mortgage rates can boost the market, there are risks of creating a bubble if not managed properly. He stressed the need for a balanced approach to avoid overheating the market. Gary Ng, an economist at Natixis, highlighted that these policies could lead to increased household debt. He pointed out that easier access to loans might encourage people to borrow more than they can afford, leading to financial instability if the market takes a downturn. Ng emphasized the importance of responsible borrowing and the risks of speculative buying. Karsten Holes, an expert on the Chinese economy, noted that the real estate sector's current state, with high debt levels and unsold homes, is already precarious. Introducing these policies without addressing underlying issues could exacerbate the problem. He warned that if property prices fall, the impact on homeowners and the broader economy could be severe. Let's look at some numbers to back this up. Before these policy changes, the average down payment for a first-time homebuyer in China was around 30%, and for second-time buyers, it was about 40%. By lowering these to 15% and 25% respectively, the government has significantly reduced the initial financial barrier for homebuyers. Mortgage interest rates have also been cut. 
Previously, the average mortgage rate for first-time buyers was about 5%, but with the new policies, it's been lowered to around 4.5%. For second-time buyers, rates have been reduced from approximately 5.5% to 5%. Now, consider the property price trends. In major cities like Beijing and Shanghai, property prices have soared over the past decade. Despite the recent slowdown, prices remain high. For instance, in Beijing, the average property price is over $6,000 per square meter. Such high prices, combined with lower down payments, could lead to increased borrowing and higher household debt levels. Debt levels among property developers are a major concern. Companies like Evergrande and Country Garden have already defaulted on their massive debts. Evergrande, for instance, defaulted on over $300 billion in debt, leading to a court-ordered liquidation in Hong Kong. Similarly, Country Garden has faced severe financial difficulties, with total liabilities around $190 billion, and has been declared in default after failing to make bond repayments. These defaults have added significant financial instability to the market, raising concerns about a broader economic crisis given the crucial role these developers play in China's real estate sector. In summary, while these new policies aim to make homeownership more affordable, experts warn that they come with significant risks. The potential for increased household debt, the high property prices, and the financial instability of major developers are all red flags. By looking at the expert opinions and the data, it's clear that these policies need to be managed carefully to avoid creating a housing bubble that could have severe consequences for China's economy. Let's talk about how housing affordability issues affect people in the US and compare this to what's happening in China. In the US, one of the biggest challenges for potential homeowners is saving enough for a down payment. With property prices soaring in many areas, setting aside 20% of the home's value can seem like trying to fill a swimming pool with a garden hose. This makes it especially tough for first-time buyers and young families who are often already juggling student loans and other debts. Managing mortgage debt is another hurdle. For many Americans, monthly mortgage payments eat up a significant chunk of their income. If interest rates rise, those payments can become even more burdensome, making it harder to afford other essentials like healthcare and education. This can lead to financial stress and even default in the worst cases. The US government has been trying various measures to make housing more affordable. For instance, there are programs like FHA loans that allow for lower down payments, making it easier for first-time buyers to enter the market. The government also offers tax incentives for homeowners and supports affordable housing projects to help lower-income families find decent places to live. Now, let's compare this to China's current measures. Recently, China lowered the down payment requirements for home buyers, 15% for first-time buyers and 25% for second-time buyers. They also cut mortgage interest rates to reduce monthly payments. These changes are designed to make it easier for people to buy homes and boost the housing market, which has been struggling. While both countries are trying to make homeownership more accessible, there are key differences. In the US, the focus has often been on providing financial assistance and tax incentives, whereas China is also tackling the issue by directly lowering the financial barriers to buying a home. However, both strategies come with risks. In the US, easy access to loans has sometimes led to overborrowing and financial crises, as seen in 2008. Similarly, in China, there are concerns that these new measures could inflate a housing bubble, leading to long-term economic instability. In summary, both the US and China face significant housing affordability challenges. The approaches they take differ, but the ultimate goal is the same, making it easier for people to own homes. However, it's crucial to balance these efforts with measures that prevent financial overextension and ensure long-term market stability. Alright, let's wrap this up. We've covered a lot of ground today, looking at China's recent housing policies and their potential impact on consumers. We talked about how the government has lowered down payment requirements and cut mortgage interest rates to make buying a home more affordable. This is a big deal because it helps more people enter the housing market and could boost the economy. However, we also discussed the risks. Lowering financial barriers might lead to higher household debt and could potentially inflate a housing bubble. If the market corrects and property values fall, new homeowners might find themselves in a tough spot, owing more than their homes are worth. This is similar to what happened during the US housing crisis in 2008, where easy access to loans led to widespread defaults and financial instability. Comparing this to the US, both countries are trying to make homeownership more accessible, but their approaches differ. The US focuses more on financial assistance and tax incentives, while China is directly lowering down payments and interest rates. Both strategies aim to help people buy homes, 
but they need to be balanced with measures that prevent overborrowing and ensure long-term market stability. In summary, China's new housing policies have the potential to make homeownership more accessible and stimulate the market, but they also come with significant risks. It's important for both governments and consumers to act cautiously to avoid creating financial problems down the road.